<laughs> Great, so to get, get started again, I'm uh, Dr. Sarah Ray, you can call me Sarah, and uh, Nusrat will be taking the lead of this presentation today, and then also you met Francis briefly he, on screen, uh, our doc a doctoral candidate in the Graduate School of Education, um, and also has been a really great partner on this project. So as a research team, we're presenting this to you today, but Nusrat will be taking the lead. And so if you move on to um, looking at our team, here we are, um, and brief background. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here because I know you're interested in the data and the coding, um, but ultimately this uh, situation, we're looking at Twitter data within a higher education context. So we collected a year's worth of data off of Twitter for a particular higher education institution. We collected uh, inter data off of institutional Twitter feeds, as well as some hashtags and mentions along the way. Um, and some background of the study is really just wanting to understand how these communication patterns and, and engagement and dialogue are occurring within this higher education space, specifically looking at a particular institution over a lot of different social events that were happening over time. I'm a social scientist, so coming to this to really use data help un understand this social phenomenon. Um, so here's a little bit of tidbits about how we came to this study. So the study overview is, again, just a recap of what we did um, or what this project is about and the context of this project. So it is situa situated within a higher education context. Um, and we're going to be examining this data with an effort to understand how these communication engagement and dialogue patterns are really engaging with aspects of diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as how we're um, addressing people's concerns in these environments as well. So purpose, research questions. So we are using content analysis methodology. So wanting to use the data to understand the current context of what's going on. Um, but these are our research questions that Nusrat's gonna go into a little bit more in depth. But how is Twitter currently used by TAMU institutional accounts? This is the institution we're looking at. You'll see it being referred to as TAMU, um, as well as different variations of that that Nusrat will talk about, as well as looking at types of posts, original posts, likes, retweets of all TAMU account data and the nature of the content, which was done. Nusrat will talk more about how we classified those um, and then how TAMU account contents are distributed among institutional sub accounts. So these are the seed accounts that were put into the social feed manager and then content disposition, which again took some uh, data coding and cleaning that Nusrat will be able to speak to, as well as the proportions of Twitter users who engaged in TAMU accounts, individual other institutions and the institution itself. So if we turn to the next slide and, and, and Nusrat will come back, not to tell everybody what you're gonna do, but sneak peeks, I guess we're giving a, a sneak peek into what Nusrat's gonna talk about. She'll have the question listed as she's discussing it too. So I know I blew by those really quickly. Um, but just a quick, I mentioned these things, but I wanted to, again, recap the time frame, July to July. And then also we use the social feed manager, which I'm sure you're all familiar with for a way to harvest the Twitter data and partnered with Dan Kushner, which I know you've seen in our library, um, who did a great job in helping uh, us set that up for this project, alas, or July, 2020. And then real quickly, these are all the seed count, uh, uh, institutional seed accounts that we use um, to pull data off. Okay, do you wanna pick up now? Okay, I will hand it over to the boss. <laughs> Hello everyone. So um, the data set is about, um, okay, I, I, I have to use that one. So data set is about the Texas AM University's tweets. Uh, so we would be looking into that. We want to look um, into the, the two major targets for the first reprocessing stage was finding out what was the user to environment engagement and what was the content disposition of each tweet. Uh, for that, we have to, at first, my task was to find uh, the pre-process the data to find out these two columns that we want to fill out uh, by obser observing the each tweets. And um, uh, for this process, um, uh, first uh, to find out the user to environment engagement, it, it was um, uh, basically, um, uh, as all the tweets are from Texas AM Univer uh, University, all the accounts are the original tweets and everything is about um, 
an institution account, that means the TAMU, uh, Texas a University. And we want to know uh, how the engagement was. That means uh, if it's a reply, who repl uh, if it's a retweet, who retweeted that uh, tweet? Uh, if that's a person, then the environment, um, user to environment engagement would be a institution to in per uh, a person, an uh, individual. Uh, if uh, other uh, institute like GW retweeted as a tweet of uh, Texas a and University, then the uh, engagement is between an institution to another institution. And to find out this, um, uh, this relationship, uh, our um, librarian, um, uh, Dan uh, Kretschner, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, so uh, he's a senior software, software developer. Uh, uh, he um, gave us an idea, how do we find out? Uh, so what he uh, mentioned, what do we have? Uh, we can find the type of the username. Uh, I mean, the type of the user account. That means um, if the account is uh, Twitter, I mean, tax, Texas AMU, university account or that is a personal account or the other institution account like uh, other institution that could be uh, another university or that could be any other or company like, like NASA, uh, WHO, they, those also, uh, those accounts also retweeted the tweet of a Texas AM University. So we want to find out the, these um, type of accounts. So for this process, but first I collected all the usernames uh, that I uh, that we had in our data set. Uh, also, at first, boom, before look, looking into that, let me give you a sneak peek of our data set itself. So that is our data set. We have the main main focus is this text. What is inside the text of uh, a tweet. By looking at the text, we are finding out the user to environment engagement and what is the content disposition that is positive, negative, or neutral type. Um, so we were looking and for the um, usernames, there are the usernames of the original tweet, there are other uh, column that is uh, the reply username, there are columns of the re uh, retweet usernames. Uh, we are we were um, looking through those. And let's go back to this slideshow. Uh, so we uh, collected all the usernames and uh, then finding out what type of user account that was. Uh, this way, we are the searching process, uh, finding, I um, mean, categorizing process was both manual as well as um, coding. For example, if a Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, account, um, contains the word TAMU, Texas AMU. That's uh, how most of the TAMU accounts are uh, named. If it contains TAMU, if it contains AG, we categorize it as a institution type of account. Uh, for the personal account, we, uh, we uh, observed if a account uh, username contains underscore or numeric values, most, because it's very, very rare to find an uh, institution or other institution uh, account with underscores, uh, with special characters. These are all mostly uh, personal account uh, usernames uh, are like that. Uh, we categorize it like that. And after uh, there were like one thousands of the usernames that we couldn't code it. So what me and my other research assistant, um, uh, Francis, we both uh, manually went through, went through each of the uh, Twitter accounts and uh, by looking at the uh, Twitter description or the type of code, we categorize whether it was a personal account, uh, if it was an institution, other institution, or there were some sub account, uh, no accounts or accounts were, were deleted. There were some suspended and others that we couldn't categorize um, by, by any category that our target category. So the institution accounts, there were more than 35,000 of tweets in our data set. Those are from institution account. The other institutions were like more than 18,000. Personals were uh, around uh, 10,000. And the rest, uh, the no account, other community suspended. Those are very little um, in numbers. So we decided to drop those columns and move on to our 
final target that is user to environment engagement column and that we filled it out uh, like this way that if the tweet is original, the environment engagement is to all the users. Uh, time you tweeted something, this the audience, uh, the target audience is all the Twitter users. So the engagement is with all. And then if uh, the username was institution, other institution, the engagement was between uh, institution and other uh, institution to institution. So we categorize it as institution. And if it was person, a personal account, then we the engagement was institution to individual. And the next target, uh, we are uh, we have completed working with the environment, uh, user to environment engagement. Our next target was to finding out the content disposition. So for this content disposition, uh, first uh, when I joined this pro project, uh, what we were doing was going through each of the tweets in the Excel sheet and manually looking into each of the uh, content. Uh, the reason was to get here, get to know about the tweets. Me and Francis, we worked on up to 300 of rows, like it took a couple of weeks. We were just observing the tweet, uh, tweets to see the pattern. And we saw some very, um, uh, uh, very obvious patterns, like congratulations. There were a lot of tweets about congratulations. There were a lot of tweets about happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day, happy Teacher's Day. There were certain keywords that were coming very frequently. So what we decided, we all three decided that let's categorize a similar type of data, emotion, I mean, similar emotion data into subcategories. So for this, we made a list of keywords that, this, that are of same uh, emotion. The first thing was uh, congratulations, congrats, and congratulations. Uh, when we, uh, when I, um, sub, I mean, categorize these type of data, the number of tweets were to more than three thousand, and we know that these uh, keywords are meaning absolutely positive, um, mean, um, referring absolutely positive tweets. And then the, on the rest of the data, I uh, categorized uh, the next um, the next uh, set of keywords. That is about our, that is our graduation, as this is our um, Texas AMU university account. So all the tweets are related to um, mostly about institution. And the second most, uh, I think, announcement is about the graduation ceremony. And those are uh, like a celebration. Those are about, those are all positive um, content. Uh, so we made it positive. There were more than 4,000 of row. Those were uh, 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 contain those tweets contain these keywords as our data set was uh, during um, 2020, like after uh, COVID. Um, yes, after COVID started, yeah, so, so July 2020 to July 2021. Uh, it was uh, after COVID-19 was detected. So we had uh, some uh, more than 2,000 of tweets that was contained the uh, um, announcement of COVID-19 announcement of getting vaccinated as these are all like a um, announcement, these are neutral type of tweets. So we made the content disposition to be um, neutral. And uh, then next, uh, I'm not going to each of them, but the process of finding each of these categories was uh, after I, the, this was on a sequential way, like I, uh, um, took all the congratulations data and stored that into our Excel sheet. And on the rest of the data, I uh, searched for the second keywords, um, set of keywords, and then they stored that into another Excel sheet and so on. Uh, it, so why these are neutral? The question is, uh, these are announcement of a game. So these are a tweet, those doesn't contain a absolute positive words. So we can say that these are actually uh, an announcement like um, game. Uh, here we have a great, uh, uh, we have keywords like win. So these are the game game type of tweets. Uh, at this stage, these tweets doesn't contain absolute positive words. So we can say that 
these were an announcement that tonight we have a uh, basketball tournament, uh, uh, basketball, uh, baseball tournament, or there's event type like tonight we have an event, uh, join us uh, on Zoom or in person. Uh, so these are just an announcement. So we made it a neutral. These are the, uh, the other set of um, keywords. Here I'd like to mention this neutral, uh, the, this uh, crime uh, data set. There were uh, more than two thousands of rows, which uh, was a tweet about uh, incident, uh, crime incident happened in the Canu area, a Texas AMU area. Those were tweeted or retweeted by the uh, by uh, Canu account. So how we categorize it? If it's an original tweet, we made it a neutral. That's like an announcement. If it's a uh, user is retweeting it or user is replying to it, quote, quoting it, that means we want to say it's a negative re re uh, reaction because no one is accepting a crime. It's definitely they are not liking it. They're disliking that what is happening in, in the area. That's why we, we categorize it as a negative if the tweet is a reply type of or retweet type of tweet. There were seven thousands of tweets that um, that we couldn't categorize, but we decided to skip and move on to our uh, some uh, statistics and visualizing what is um, the content of the TAMU tweets. Uh, the, well, uh, the question that should come in uh, everyone's mind is how, uh, how these keywords were collected. Is it like a random guess or just looking uh, the, or the, the, on the tweets? It wasn't exactly like, um, guessing or assuming what I was doing on the each step of the selecting one keywords. For example, when I was selecting this first one, the congrats, congratulations. Uh, after this stage on the rest of the data, I visualized a word cloud. And here by looking at the, uh, the bigger text means this one, it has more um, occurrence. These uh, keywords have more occurrence. I'm looking at the keywords like, uh, I selected at what, is it positive, is it negative, how do I categorize? So each time I uh, select one keyword there and then I used to run the word cloud again, visualize the word cloud again and again and do the categorization. For example, uh, like uh, while looking at the help and support, these these two were, um, uh, these two words popped out or uh, popped up in our word cloud very later on our uh, of the stage but when i saw that the help and support these, these are very these two uh, these two keywords are very frequent in our data set and, I, and these are positive type of tweets so i added it uh, here and run all the uh, uh, run my program from the beginning to, just to uh, extract and uh, all the data, similar type of data into this Excel sheet. And this was our data set. After I categorize all the contents, uh, the content disposition of the tweet. So here we have uh, each Excel sheet with um, uh, data like this. Uh, this is the actual Excel sheet where all the tweets are uh, contains the gig M. And Big M is a uh, thumbs up, which is absolutely positive type of tweet. Here is the Congress data set. Like we can see one of these um, tweets, like congratulations, Dr. Apes. And all the tweets are on the similar category. Let's go back to here. So after our uh, data set is prepared, uh, these are all the uh, counts of our you know, data set. The user characteristics are user types. There are three types of users uh, types in our data set. That is institution account. There is other institution account. There is individual account. The locations are mostly all of them are because of uh, Texas AMU tweets. The locations are all in Texas. Uh, of the user accounts. Um, the tweet types are um, their original tweets, reply, post, uh, as well. And 
the content disposition that we search um, categorized on the previous step, we can see that 54% of the tweets were neutral, the positives were um, uh, 44% and the negatives were very low because the way we categorized the negatives are very low. We couldn't looking at the category uh, because it's uh, institution account, it's, uh, it's very rare to find a negative content from in a university account. So it's, uh, it's common to have less negative tweets uh, in, in a uh, institution account, like a university account. And the number of retweets and likes for this, we categorize that if a tweet is getting less than 100 uh, favorite counts or less than 100 retweets, it is a low category. If it's between 100 to 1,000, then it is medium type of uh, retweet or uh, favorite counts. And if it's more than 1,000, we can say it got high retweets or it got high um, favorite counts. And uh, our, for our research question, we wanted to know, uh, we want to explore only the cameo uh, tweets where the account type is uh, institution. And for this uh, research question, we only look into those tweets which got at least minimum um, interaction, like minimum to retweet one retweet, minimum one page account, and the type of the tweet was um, um, institution, cameo institution, not other institution. And the data set uh, uh, is contains um, 20,000 soft number uh, tweets and the maximum retweet that counted by uh, Texas uh, AMU tweet is more than 5,000, which is neutral in um, content. And um, the content was about the traffic accident. And we can see that the minimum number, uh, there are a lot of uh, tweets that got minimum uh, retweets, that is one, like more than 3,000 of tweets uh, <laughs> that got only one retweet. So, so far to this um, uh, analysis, we can say that majority of the tweets weren't getting much attention, much reaction from, our, uh, from the users. Uh, it's very, very rare cases we have high retweet, high favorite counts in our in this data set. Similarly, for the favorite counts, um, the highest favorite count collected by Atami tweet is more than 9,000. It was positive reaction. It was about a football game event, and the minimum counts among the minimum uh, count of uh, favorite counts, majority of them were neutral and. Uh, like yeah, more than 800 were neutral. That got minimum one favorite count. For our next re uh, research question, we want to know which, uh, uh, at what number of tweets that got, that collected um, high, low, medium retweet count and high, low, medium uh, favorite count. This, uh, this is the, distribution of the retweet counts among the tweets, we can see that majority of the tweets that got only one or two very low amount of retweets that is like more than 5,000. Here we can see that it's very, very rare, um, low interactions or sharing the TAMU um, tweets. Whereas the high, uh, high tweet, uh, you can see that the highest one was around 5,000. And that was neutral in um, re uh, content and only one retweet got, uh, one tweet got this highest retweet count. And yeah. So we want to look into the uh, medium and uh, high, the tweets that got medium to high number of retweets. We can see that most of the tweets were originals. Um, there were like more than 800s were original and reply was only six, quote was 11, there was no retweets. And most of them were uh, positive in content. Similarly for uh, 
favorite counts. Uh, here, favorite counts is a little bit better than uh, the statistics is a little bit better than the retweets. Uh, here we can see that the, on the if you look into the medium and high, we can see most of the tweets were positives and that got favorite count uh, because favorite is an absolute positive uh, tie uh, content. So people with press on the favorite count when they like a content of uh, a tweet. And majority of those tweets, uh, the high to medium to high number of um, which, uh, favorite count collected by a uh, Tamiya account, they were original and those were positive. And this is the, uh, all the, the, for this next research question, um, we want to know what is the content disposition of the um, type of tweets um, that is uh, original retweet or reply uh, uh, quote like that. Um, so uh, among all the uh, among all the institutional tweets, um, thirty five percent were original retweets and those were neutral, and the twenty nine percent were positive and these are all the uh, percentage of tweets. Uh, but we can see that there is. There are some negatives, but as the negatives are very low in numbers, we want to know uh, what uh, what's happening inside the negatives one. So we uh, find out that most of the negative re uh, tweets were retweets, and the proportion of users uh, who interacted cameo uh, tweets. Uh, most of the users were institution. That means those are other accounts of Jan, Texas A&M University. The individuals' um, interactions were 23% and other institutions were 13%. So, so far, that is our finding. We have a lot of things to find out, a lot of, uh, as this is going to be a research paper, we, uh, the way of uh, research is going to be, uh, going to be like for a conference for a research paper our research uh, target is building a research like uh, the goal of making a paper to publish uh, some statistics so this is our next step so i would like to yes, yes. and I'll, I'll make it very quick so you have time to ask questions from nasrat um but basically continuing on the analysis and visualization using also the hashtag data that we collected, which is coming more directly from the individual. So we wanna understand how the hashtags that we were collecting on, which I think I have that on the next slide. Some of those. Yeah, so these are the hashtags we collected on as well, um, which has a, we had one seed that was tracking that nine different hashtags. And so this is the next thing that we'll be discussing and and that uh, Nasrat will be using her skills to examine some of the hashtag data and then the mentions as well um, to kind of understand the beyond the institutional context we see a lot of like echo chamber ideas like putting it out as like an announcement platform that most people are really seemingly happy about um, but but also knowing that these larger social context issues are occurring within the context of a an institution during the time frame of 2020 to 2021, um, that was also experiencing a, a variety of different uh, social uh, issues at the time. So we're going to do some analysis and connection around those uh, social concepts too. So I think it's probably a good place to stop. You're welcome to reach out to me if you want to. You know how to reach uh, Nusrat, and then Francis. He'll be he's on the job market. So if you have any. <laughs> job ideas for Francis. <laughs> but anyway, please feel free to follow up and ask any questions or talk about things that Nasrat shared. Oh, yes, good job. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I do have a question. If you could go back one. Um, mm -hmm. So this is where you're then as because part of your research question at the beginning was how do institutions handle DA, DEI issues in their communications? Yes. So is that what you're trying to get to then through these 
8,700 tweets is how did that handle? I guess, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, for sure. And I think that's a, a really good question. So when we think about the year that the data was collected on and those communication patterns, there were so many things that were bubbling up socially in different aspects of the media. And then Twitter, the institution, which is has a very robust communication platform and uses it quite, I would say, effectively to to send out communication, but not necessarily for dialogue and engagement around these more difficult, complex issues. We really wanted to understand how the institution was engaging, period, which I think was our first part of the research question, and then to further understand how they're addressing some of these larger social issues. So we took these hashtags um, based off of things that were bubbling up out of the, the um, Racial, racial unrest, like with the murder of George Floyd over the summer of 2020, started collecting on these hashtags. And then also you see um, Me Too, and these are, they're TAMU, I have them coded from when we were doing a different presentation outside of the institution, but they are TAMU, not, uh, that was a, HWU is like an, an anonymous code that we use. So, but with these hashtags, these are things that became prevalent during that time frame, and they mirrored larger social hashtags. So um, Black Lives Matter, you see that um, in the context of here as well, um, those types of things. We took the insider institutional hashtags from the institution's membership to look at what's being said by individuals to further examine the messages that are coming out of institutions, which likely there's just gonna be this big disconnect with this institution sending out lots of messages, people having feelings and perspectives around there, but not any dialogue actually occurring is what I anticipate finding. Um, and I think by our first research question, seeing how it really is just like this dissemination of really positive or neutral announcement oriented messages um, and having pretty minimal uh, back and forth with membership or individuals. Um, it, I think it'll be interesting to take a look at these hashtags, even though we do have a, a smaller, a much smaller amount, a, a much lower number of data collected around these seeds. So, and then the mentions, I don't, I didn't pull the mentions out, but the mentions we started collecting um, in, I think February of 2021. So we started collecting those because we weren't getting as many hits off of these hashtags, off of this one hashtag seed. And so the mentions produced a much more robust number. I think we have, oh, I don't wanna lie, but I think we have around 20,000 mentions. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to go back and look at those that had some more um, in-depth content mm -hmm. related to some of these dialogue pieces. Does that answer your question, Ryan? It does. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think especially if you get into the mentions, what you might want to look at too is doing some n-gram analysis, which is where you take a certain number of words before and after to get the context for how the mention, like, or even how the hashtag is put into the context of the fuller tweet. Um, and there are a variety of packages that do that. It's, um, but it could be interesting to see kind of like what are the common lead words before a mention or what are the words right after a mention. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have any other questions? I have another question, I guess. So, um, and I guess this gets. I mean, did you do like most of this in Excel, or did you use something else and then re put it back into Excel? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? <laughs> well, I mean, you can like do this analysis in Python or in R mm -hmm. and then rebuild an Excel out yeah. of it. But you yeah. showed the Excel and I was wondering, did you do it? And you can't do it in Excel. Um, uh, I co categorized everything, fill up all the data processing and everything in, in Python and then save stored all the data uh, to Excel sheet. 
the uh, package more used is uh, pandas package for all the pre-processing and, okay. like, and everything pandas um uh, package and for the visualization both seaborn and matplotlib were used okay yeah that's what i thought you had done but i just wanted to make sure that i got it right because you could do it all in excel it'd just be really challenging yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not really comfortable on Excel as a data scientist student. I am more comfortable with Python. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I had figured. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? If not, um, I was going to maybe make a suggestion that, like, not to open up a whole nother enormous amount of work, which it would be. Um, but to look at other sources, like maybe LinkedIn and things, if you're looking for other types of engagement. I mean, I'm only thinking that because like within our own department, we're thinking about how do we communicate to the outside world as a department, like with official communications. And our our LinkedIn account is way more active than our Twitter. Our Twitter is very, very low. Um, and, and, and especially in terms of getting alumni, like responses from alumni. If we contact them through LinkedIn, we get huge hits if we contact them through Twitter or mention people, there's just like nothing, it's like silence. So there's there's just some networks and I don't even know why, that might just be us. Other places it might be more Twitter heavy, but there's some networks that seem to go better through or they grow faster on one platform than another. And so you might get just a wholly different type of engagement going on over there. Um, but it's just an idea to maybe take a look at and see I mean, you could visually just look at it and go, you know, does this look kind of similar or is there a lot going on? Are we missing things here that are happening that we're just on the different platform? I think that's a really interesting and valuable point because I think we're, like early days of Twitter when Twitter was really hot and sexy, that that's where everybody, even institutions, higher education institutions are kind of just throwing noodles at the wall to see what sticks. And Twitter became integrated into these communication platforms and plans, but also without a lot of expertise or knowledge necessarily of its members. Like the people who were responsible for them were sometimes like a graduate student who has been named the social media manager who starts a Twitter account in a department and uh, now is like the Twitter platform that either is utilized or not utilized based on who's in the seat and who understands Twitter. So it, it's, it's really uneven in some ways too. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, it's an interesting idea and like who, who's using it more and why and what they're saying. Because I think too, what we found is that it is highly used to, to publicize sporting events at an institution that's super into football. <laughs> so um, you get a lot of that and that's really popular and people are excited about football culture at this institution, um, which highly skews the messages too, right? Um, but also on um, like some of the news sites, we see people excited about football, but at the same time, one of the head coaches who was a, a black man was um, sent a lot of different um, messages to his personal Twitter account that were very racist. Um, and that's not reflected in this Twitter data set, but was something that was experienced by a person of color that's a member of the institution that's also part of this football identity. So we have these like tension points that are not captured in this data set. So I think that really kind of speaks to that a little bit, John. So thank you for pulling that up. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens out of the mentions because I feel like that's where you're going to get a lot of the richness mm -hmm. and then, yeah, because it's going to be people calling out the university through mentions is kind of how I would see it playing out. Uh, I don't know that I, I'm going to disagree with JP. I don't feel like people are going to be calling people out over LinkedIn. I think that would be more likely to happen over. I'm not going to be like, oh, like, at you, like, thanks for that racist comment. No, I don't know. I just going to put that on LinkedIn. I love um, <laughs> LinkedIn is not where the drama is. I think Twitter is the place for drama. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, could, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, as far as content analysis, I know I've seen other ways where you kind of do like clustering. So then you can like, mm -hmm. it's automating that process. And then you kind of, it creates these own themes and groupings based on frequency of words. 
I, you know, I mentioned this, but I also think that actually the way that you guys are doing it is like more effective. It's definitely more labor intensive. But <laughs> I've, done a good job. I've been done there. A good job. I have done, yeah, I've done open coding. It is, it's so rough. <laughs> but like, yeah, sometimes with those clustering programs, like, I don't know, you kind of you get themes, but then you, you, you don't really know what they mean. And so I, I think doing the legwork that you guys are doing is the, the best route. So and I commend you for doing it. <laughs> yeah, and that legwork too, I think like where where so Francis, who's on the call, and I kind of started with that manual process mm -hmm. that then when Nusrat joined, she was able to join and then start seeing how to take that and do some of the automation around that. Automation, is that the right word? Yeah. Automation. Okay, automation <laughs> of, of how to start taking the things that we really are. We do, I mean, as humans, like understand different emotions based off words and assorted use of hashtags, right? Like we can understand a hashtag to be, um, we can identify an emotion with certain sets of words um, that are also coupled with a particular hashtag in ways that probably AI is not necessarily as capable of doing. And particularly with words that don't mean anything because they're fully nonsense, like whoop, um, which is a highly, utilized word to signify that, hey, I'm an Aggie and I'm really proud of it um, in this context. But outside of that context, nobody cares or knows and it doesn't matter. So uh, those things are very complicated, I think, when you're trying to like peel out like these different emotions within a very insulated institutional environment too. Now you know so much about being an Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this point then.